The first thing you need to do is be safe. Disconnect the appliance or turn off the breaker to avoid electric shock. Hello guys, welcome to DIY Repair Now. Today we're going to be working on a GE side-by-side -side refrigerator. The model number is on the display. And the problem that we have with this refrigerator is that as you can see in this picture, the temperatures are way off. So this repair is going to be a little different. If your temperature are crazy way off the way you see on this picture, go ahead and watch the whole video because this is going to solve your problem. Now, if your refrigerator only has the coils freezing up in the back, like you're going to see in this picture, then your problem should be a little different and you need to replace a different part. However, we're going to give you a demonstration on how to fix both issues in this video. Again, if your refrigerator has the coils this way, but your temperatures are fine is they're not crazy go to the top corner and watch this other video that you see on the display or go to a link on the description of this video and it will be right there for you now if your coils are freezing up but the temperature is fine and it's not like crazy in this picture i know i'm mentioning it again because it's two different repairs go ahead and go back in this video and grab the link on the top corner or go to the description of the video and the link for the right video is gonna be there. Now we're gonna go ahead and proceed to disassemble this freezer panel. We're gonna remove that little light cover and we're gonna go ahead and remove the light bulbs. Make sure you disconnect your refrigerator to avoid electric shock now we're going to go ahead and remove there's two screws on the top and two screws on the bottom go ahead and use like a needle nose pliers to go ahead and uh, remove the top panel once you got it out go ahead and put it on the sink because it will be ice and it will be dripping water remove the two filler screws that are holding the heat element And now we're going to go ahead and remove the terminal wires from the heat element to be able to do some testing. Now, for me to test this heat element, I always like to take it uh, out from the housing. So go ahead and remove it. Don't try to test it in place because you can end up damaging the heat element. Sometimes these terminals are very stick to the heat element. So you have to take a risk to remove it. As you see right there, I got the heat element out and we're going to test it for continuity. As you hear is a beep. If you don't have a tester, you can find one in the link of the description of this video. And you can find that up tester and it will buzz. It will make a sound when you test it for continuity. Now we're going to go ahead and since this heat element test, right? We're going to go ahead and connect the two terminals and put it back in place because we already know that it's fine however if you have this coils freezing up but your temperature in the refrigerator and the front panel is fine go ahead and uh, replace uh, the kit like i show in the other video that i put on the link now we're going to remove this thermistor and we're going to go ahead and test it because this is one of the most common things when you have a freezing up coils now as you see while i was doing this the refrigerator went on a defrost mode and you can actually see the heat element lighting up to defrost the coils so now this is an indication that our heater and the defrost thermostat are fine however we're going to go ahead and replace the defrost thermostat and the thermistor because the homeowner want us to replace them for preventative maintenance i didn't have the heat element uh, with me in this case but sometimes i like to replace everything which is the thermistor that you see right now the defrost thermostat and the heat element that you already see me testing because 
we do this as a preventative maintenance. However, this repair went a little different because uh, end up being more than these three parts. Well, actually the heat element and the defrost thermostat test okay, but like I said, you know, we usually do this as a preventative maintenance. If you go to the link that I put in the description of this video, then you will see what I'm talking about. If you only have the frost and the back panel, you gotta go and watch the video because that video is gonna help you more than this one. This one is, this video is for those who have crazy temperatures on the display. Now I'm putting this Thermi store in a bottle with ice. You can use a cup as well. And you see the chart right there. There are 32 degrees temperature, which is, that's the temperature inside of a water cup with ice between 32, 33. Um, it should give you a reading of 16 kilo ohms and a room temperature, it should give you five kilo ohms as you see on the chart that I just show on the picture. Now that thermistor test, okay, sorry I didn't got that on the video, but I'm gonna give you a link later on if, to teach you how to go ahead and check those thermistors. Now we're gonna remove this thermistor that it's in side the freezer but not on the coils is right there on the right wall and now we're gonna go ahead and test this thermistor and this is the whole purpose for this video this is the thermistor that reads the temperature inside the freezer basically this is the temp this is the thermistor this sends how much temperature it's in the freezer compartment not on the freezer coil so it's two different thermistors one that goes on the freezer and one that goes on this wall this is the chart again now i'm testing again i don't know if you can see my tester but in this bottle of cold water with ice it should give me 16 and it's not going above 12. i had it there for a long time so that means this thermistor it is not good and this is our issue However, we explain the situation to the um, customer and the customer decide to replace the defrost thermostat, this thermistor and the freezer thermistor to, uh, for preventative maintenance. But I'm gonna go ahead and show you everything that we did in this video. But if your temperatures are crazy, go ahead and start by replacing this thermistor that you see me working on on this footage. After you scrape the wires, make the connections, put some wire nuts, go ahead and put some silicone on the wire nuts to prevent from humidity or water or condensation gets in those, in those terminals wire connections. Now go ahead and look for the right position for the cover. If this thermistor that you see me working on tests good for you and it give you 16 kilo ohms in a cup with ice water, Go ahead and check the video on the top corner. Go ahead and go to that link or go to the link in the description of the video and watch that other video. And that's gonna help you to fix your issue if this thermistor checked okay for you. Now we're gonna go ahead and replace the thermistor um, that goes in the coils. Go ahead and scrape your wires. Make sure you twist them a way they do a better graph when you put them together. Scrape the wires, the goats on the harness. And now go ahead and connect them together and go ahead and use some wire knots to make the installation. I'm sorry I didn't got that really good in the camera, but this is a very tiny space and my camera was tilted. Now go ahead and install the wire nuts. Make sure you put some silicone and the wire nut connections. That way to prevent from humidity, water, or any moisture gets inside those connections and it starts giving you a, a bad readings on the board. Again, this thermistor did I'm replacing right now, test it okay. But once while we're doing this, the customer decide to go ahead and replace it for preventative maintenance, as I said before. 
Now we're going to go ahead and remove the defrost thermostat. You can go to another link that I have in the top corner or in the description of the video to learn how to test these thermostats and thermistors once you have it out. Because to test them in place, you can test it from the board, you can test them in place, but you might not have a very good reading. So my suggestion would be like remove them from the refrigerator and check it out so you can go to that link that I just put on the top corner or go to the description of the video and you will find that link. It's a special video just to test how to, just to learn how to test the defrost thermostat, thermistor and heat elements. Now, the uh, paperwork in the back brings this um, wire connectors, but I don't like to use those. I like to use wire nuts because I believe it grafts the wire better. So that's your choice if you want to use what comes on the back or you use some wire nuts like I'm doing in this video. Go ahead and twist the wires. Now we install in the defrost thermostat. This defrost thermostat test okay as well, but you know, this refrigerator is about 12, 15 years old. And those are one of the most common issues with this GE refrigerator. So we just replacing it as a preventative maintenance. We just didn't happen to have the uh, defrost heater and that's why we didn't do it. But the uh, customer make another appointment for that as well. Yes, as a preventative maintenance. But again, I'm going to keep saying it. None of this was our issue. When you have those numbers off on the display, most likely it's going to be either the freezer thermistor, not the evaporator, the freezer thermistor. Go ahead and put your defrost thermostat in place. And go ahead and adjust your wiring. Go ahead and connect this light bulb um, attachment and put it in place. Um, also, if those numbers are kind of crazy, it can be a thermistor on the refrigerator side, but that's going to be another video. Go ahead and defrost all your coils or let them thaw out. Go ahead and install the screws that you might have removed to be able to access to the wiring. Just like so. And go ahead and install the panel back again and go ahead and push it a little in because it has like male to female connections on the top. Once you got it in place, go ahead and install the four screws that holds your freezer panel. Go ahead and install the light bulbs. At this point, I already have connected refrigerator and go ahead and install the light cover. Install all your shelves. And at this point, we're pretty much done. Now we're going to go ahead and just set the temperatures where they should be. And at the time that we are recording this, it's been about two months. So this repair was a success. If this video helped you in any way, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for future videos. Thanks for watching.